So as we think about the Christmas season on this Christmas Eve, we think about everything that goes into preparing for these two days, essentially, and the church and in our own lives. And Christmas doesn't always go as planned, does it? I don't know how it is for all of you, but it seems like no matter what you do, no matter how much preparation you make, it always seems like things can go out of control quickly. I remember a few years ago when I was newer in the ministry and Roman was younger and I, uh, I felt a lot of pressure at the church I was at. It was a larger church and had the Christmas um, school program coming up that was a big deal. And it was kind of a weird spot for me to be in because I, my first church was a large church like this with a large school with two campuses that I was a member at. I had been baptized there, confirmed there, married there, did my field work, became a vicar, and was a pastor there, all in the same church. No challenges at all. <laughs> Kidding. So um, I felt a lot of pressure as a new young pastor to make sure everything went right. And as you know, when you're dealing with young children in a school Christmas program, everything goes flawlessly. So the expectations are high because of that. No, but you put a lot of pressure on yourselves. And, and it seemed like in this service that everything that went wrong could go wrong. It was like we ran out of seats and, and the kids weren't where they were supposed to be. And like, you know, we lost baby Jesus. And, you know, it was just like everything was a mess. And, and as a pastor, sometimes you feel this incredible amount of pressure to make things look and feel perfect and everything just right so that all of the people's Christmas experience can be focused on the right things. And admittedly, as a pastor, sometimes you forget where your focus is. And so we had all of these things go wrong. You know, we had microphones not working. We had kids singing way too loud when they shouldn't have been, and some kids not singing at all, and, you know, sheep wandering off while the thing was going on. And, and, uh, and at the end, towards the end of the service, my, oh, the other thing, like, I, I had set my, my sermon notes up on the podium, and I got up there, and they were gone. And I'm going... What is happening here, you know? I mean, how much more can go wrong? And it was because one of the older kids that had, you know, like two lines printed out on a piece of paper, one piece of paper wasn't paying attention, I know, hard to believe, and picked up all of them and walked away. <laughs> and I get up there and no sermon and sheep wandering off and baby Jesus is nowhere to be found and all of these things. And I'm just at the point where I'm like, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. <laughs> Now, that's how I felt, and I, I got through it, and it was fine, and, you know, afterwards, of course, everybody's putting their arm around you and saying, you know, hey, Pastor, it's okay, it's, it's a good time of year, and we need to keep the focus on where it was, and I remember then talking to Kim and getting, getting back to where, you know, it was after all of this, and all the damage had been, had been done, and I was really short with her about everything. See, I put them back here now so I don't forget or lose my message notes. So I was talking to her, and Roman was young, and, you know, um, we had told him, you know, you can open one present when Daddy's done doing the thing at church and all this, and he was asking, and it felt like he had asked for the hundredth time, and I was just like yelling about, we need to keep the focus on what this season's all about, and this isn't why we do this, and this is about Jesus, and we need to have joy, and in the middle of it, I'm going, wow, <laughs> that's irony, you know, and the thing is, is the truth is, whether you're a longtime Christian, a new Christian, whether you're dedicated to your faith, or Whatever it is, we all deal with moments of stress and frustration, and we can often lose what Christmas is really all about. 
we can lose why we do all these things in preparation of the celebrating of Christmas. All of Advent, the culmination of Advent in this Advent season is to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing for these weeks while we're lighting candles, while we're looking ahead, while we're waiting to get to the moment. We are preparing our hearts, preparing our lives to be ready for Jesus to come into them. And so often when we do that, we lose focus and things don't go like we think they should. And then how we respond to Jesus is different depending on maybe the day, how we're feeling, the time of year, where we're at in our lives. So I wanted to take a few moments this morning as we're preparing for Christmas celebration of Jesus' birth and look at how people responded to this news in Scripture. So the first one we see in Luke chapter 1, 26 is Mary. Mary responds with joy. We see that the God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee. Nazareth is kind of this country town. It's kind of the backwoods. It's kind of on the outer area. And goes to this virgin, this young girl named Mary. Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you, the angel says. The Lord is is with you. Mary's troubled at first and wonders what kind of greeting this would be. Mary, you found favor with God. You will be with child. You will give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He'll be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, Mary asks, how can this be since I am a virgin? How can this be? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the angel says, nothing is impossible with God. And Mary responds with joy and the angel leaves. So Mary is questioning absolutely. She isn't immediately just like, oh, this is great. I was waiting for this angel. I knew he was coming. My life's work is complete. No, Mary was shocked. She questions. She asks, how can this be? It doesn't make sense. And you know, I think sometimes we feel bad when we question God or question how things can be a certain way. Or say, God, you know, this Christmas season, I've been extra careful to try to show your love to the community. I haven't cut anybody off in traffic on purpose. I haven't stolen anybody's parking space more than once. I haven't done anything to irritate people or to be rude, God, I've shown your love whenever I can. Then why is it that my car broke down right now? Why is it that I lost my job? Why is it that I can't go and do what I planned? You know, it's okay to question things. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be scared. But the truth is God's message is the same. God's message is the long plan. And Mary gets a glimpse of this. She wants to understand. She doesn't fully, but she trusts and she finds joy in it. Now, Joseph, Mary's fiance, doesn't respond exactly the same way. Joseph's in a little bit of a different place. See, Mary is the one who talked to the angel directly. When she goes to Nazareth, Joseph is a little put off by this news. Joseph is 
disappointed. Joseph thinks that Mary is this moral, upstanding young girl who's doing everything right. Joseph thinks that he's going to be married soon and like all these plans he has for his life are going to be starting. He is excited. He's ready for all the hard work he's done to begin. And he finds out that Mary says, hey, honey, while I was gone, I just want you to know an angel came to me and just let me know I'm pregnant. It's okay. It's from God. Everything's going to be fine. So here's what I'm thinking. And, and you can just imagine Joseph going, wait, wait, back up. What happened now? And then, you know, after like the, the shock sets in, Joseph goes to talk to his friends. And, and can you imagine him trying to explain this to his buddies? So guys, you know, Mary was off with her cousin for a while and she came back and told me this and I'm just wondering what you guys think. You know, this is tough, he is confused. Joseph has a reputation as a godly man. Joseph has a reputation of being engaged to this godly woman. Joseph wants to do the right thing, but reputation was important. Mary could actually be stoned for being an adulteress in this time period. Joseph could have been shunned from the society, and it would have been totally appropriate for Joseph to publicly say, I am ending this engagement and cutting Mary out of his life. So he is a little bit disillusioned with the whole situation. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and didn't want to expose her, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. So he's going to do this quietly and not draw attention to Mary. He doesn't want to ruin her life any more than it's already going to be. He wanted to take a step back and calmly deal with the situation and not just react. And Joseph was trying to figure out everything that was going on. He wanted to trust. He wanted to believe. He wanted to have hope. And I'm sure many of us have had that feeling. You know, especially this time of year. This can be a time of year where you see people you don't always see. Where relationships that have a history to them are brought back to the forefront. Where you want to trust that somebody's moved on, that somebody's doing better, that you can open yourself up to that person again, but you're skeptical about where that might lead. Joseph gets confirmation of all of this. An angel appears and tells Joseph. But after he considered all this, an angel appeared and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. Joseph woke up. He did what the angel commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and they named him Jesus. So what I think that we can learn from all of this in our lives and during Christmas is for us to put aside our personal feelings. Mary could have said, no, not me, anybody else. Joseph could have said, I can't handle this anymore. You know, it's all about us putting aside what we want and looking to what other people need. That we reach out and seek others first. That we look around the people that are hurting around us and see how we can gather around them this Christmas season and show the love of Jesus. Put aside that pride that's so easy to let us grab a hold of us and take the focus off Jesus. The second thing is I want to remind you, and I know you're all in church today and this sounds a little redundant, but as we seek out others and seek out to them and pause and, and reflect Seek after what God's doing in your life. It's different than what God is doing in my life. It's different than what God is doing today and tomorrow. The bigger plan is to continue to hear how God's working among you and your family and your friends. Find the joy that Mary had amidst the disillusionment that will naturally come up. Find the joy that God's doing in each one of our 
lives today. God probably isn't going to send an angel to you to make it exactly clear. God probably isn't going to make it in a way that is so obvious through a dream that you're going to wake up and know. But God is going to lead you through his Holy Spirit down the path he has laid out for you. So I encourage you to respond how Mary does. How does Mary do all this? It's not that she was super awesome and ready and able to take this load on as a young girl. She responds by putting aside her feelings and responds in humility to seeking God. And here's what she says. I am the Lord's servant. My prayer for you, my prayer for me, my prayer for all of us is that this is how we respond this Christmas season and heading into the new year. Lord, I'm going to be disillusioned. I'm going to question. I don't know what tomorrow brings. This is going to be hard at times. But Lord, I love you. I love others. I want them to see Jesus through me. And God, I am your servant. May that be our response. May that be our joy as we head into Christmas this evening and tomorrow. In Jesus' holy name, amen. <laughs>